All right, hey, I think we're live for our very first Google Live Hangout with, uh, with uh, Frank and Todd. And uh, I want to thank everyone for joining. Obviously, I'm maybe a little bit nervous. It's the first time I've ever done this. But thanks to Frank for uh, helping get this together. And we're going to be calling these series Keeping It Real because we want to keep it real. And um, you know, just that's my philosophy is always being straightforward, keeping it real. And same with Frank, and same with Todd. I, I'm really excited to have Todd on today. Um, we've talked about doing these things for probably what eight months to a year, Todd. <laughs> it's been a while. I'm excited too. Yeah, it's been a while. I mean, we talked about it for eight months to to a year, but I just don't have the bandwidth to get it going. And then I met Frank, and Frank's like, "Hey." Yeah. Hey, we can set these things up. So I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So it was good, man. We got all we got it all going on, and, and I think it's really cool because every two weeks we're going to interview someone who's really has something of, of value to really offer the real estate community, and we'll promote it, and we'll do a nice little live hangout. And what's nice is if anyone misses anything, this will be up on the YouTube channel for Real Geeks website, so you can watch the recording. And if anyone has any questions, I believe on here. Um, again, I'm a little new to these. There's a Q and A app. So if you have a question while Todd's presenting his ideas here, I ask it and we'll uh, we'll share it. <clears throat> hey, 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 Frank! I think we got a technical issue. I can hear what I said like 40 seconds ago in my earphones. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Do you have a window up in the background of the live stream? Yeah, I think you're live. You're probably live streaming the delay. That I think Google Hangout delays these a little bit. You probably have a window open, uh, the actual on. live event in the background of your browser. All right, I did. I'm sorry. There Holy smoke. So, all right, there we go. You live. Did. That's rookie mistake number one. <laughs> Don't have a live stream in another tab. All right, yeah, sorry. About that. Just, these, these are actually prove... Google, Google Hangout delays them a little bit, so that's why he's here in the reverb. Yeah, so I'm sorry about that, folks. I actually had another tab open trying to help somebody view this and said, hey, they couldn't get on, so I told them to go to keepingitreal.com. We embedded a live one, and I actually had that still up in my, uh, my tab. Good pickup, Frank. Cool. Anyway, so we're going to be doing these um, twice a month, every Thursday. Frank's going to be my co-host. And Todd, on this first episode, is going to be sharing how he gets 7.5% listings by offering world-class service and value to his customers. And um, I'm Jeff Manson. I'm a Hawaii real estate broker and the owner of Real Geeks. I've been a realtor since 1993, and I sold in three real estate markets. I started in Orange County, California, moved to Santa Cruz, California, and then 14 years ago, I moved here to Hawaii. Lucky me, right? Um, and <laughs> last year, last year, my Hawaii real estate website generated 205 sales for my team, and um, I originally created. Real Geeks and started Real Geeks not to be a vendor. It was to run my own business because I needed a, a, a better online solution for my team. So that's what I, I started Real Geeks to do that. It was not to be a vendor. And then other agents I networked actually caught wind of it and asked if they could you know, use the solution. And then that's how Real Geeks actually started. Mm -hmm. um, my co-host is, like I said, Frank Cle Klesitz. And he's from Viral Marketing. And they specialize in helping agents um, do videos and online marketing through social media. And the, you know what, Frank? The more I know, get to know Frank, I've got to know him over the last month. I, I met him at uh, Icon. Um, personally met him. We spoke on the phone, but I personally met him at Icon and Infusionsoft conference. And the more I get to know Frank, this guy is really passionate about helping agents and just helping people in general doing this online marketing and videos and, and work in their databases. And, you know, he really gets it. And that's why I'm really excited to be partnering Thanks, up, up on this. No, I'm sincere, man. I am sincere. You, you're awesome, Thanks. man. What can I say? <laughs> I, I, you, I, I'm really impressed. And, I, you know, I don't know. I'm, I don't get impressed by a lot of things, but I'm really impressed by your enthusiasm, your willing to help, and just stepping up. I, I really appreciate it. I'm sure Todd does too because we've been talking about this for like eight months, getting these things going. And then, you know, Todd, our guest that's going to be sharing with us today, um, he's a real estate broker in the Dallas area and um, he runs his own company and he's got a team of six, including himself, and they're on track to do about 160 transactions this year. 
and um, that includes a couple marketing people and um, transaction coordinators, support people and stuff, so they can give that world class service and you know and bring the value to the customer. And he's also written a couple books. I'm looking at my notes because he's done so much. Um, the New Rise in Real Estate is one of the books that he wrote, and I think it was a bestseller on Amazon, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And there was another one, Live Free, The Art of the Two-Year Flip. And he also helps train agents, and he's also been um, featured on HGTV, Discovery, the Travel Channel, and he's also been featured in um, USA Today, the Ch Chicago Tribune, um, Dallas Morning News, and a bunch more. So, you know, we're really excited to have Todd on here. He's a straight forward, straight shooting guy and, you know, no BS kind of guy and he likes to keep it real and that's why we had him on our first show. And, you know, let's get going and hear what Todd has to share. Cool. Well, what I'll try to do um, is make sure there's a ton of time for questions. So, I'll, <clears throat> um, I'll kind of share a little bit of the core of what, uh, what we do. Hopefully, we'll get some people fired up and excited. Um, and then, if there's like a really great question that comes through Frank or Jeff and you guys just want to interrupt, totally cool. I think it'll be more fun just to be interactive. So it's not just too much me of me too. talking and trying to present. So um, right out of the gate, I would just say real quickly that uh, my passion in real estate has always been to deliver the absolute most value that not only I can deliver, but that can possibly be delivered in the marketplace. So ironically, for the, it's, it's funny to me the title of this, this uh, hangout because um, in the early years of my real estate career, believe it or not, I actually bought and owned for five years a flat fee real estate brokerage. So a lot of people don't know that about me. It's kind of funny. But we used to sell houses for like $3,000 flat fee uh, all day, and we sold a bunch of them. Um, and the reason I got into that business is early on, my passion, like I said, was to deliver as much value as I can. I was young. I was trying to figure out how to do a bunch of volume. And I ended up saying, hey, I'll do it. I'll do the same or a little bit more than everybody else, but I'll charge less. And what I ultimately learned was that process was fine. It was acceptable, but it didn't allow me to deliver as much value as I was constantly learning that I could. Each day, you know, it seemed like I learned something else. I mean, that would be great, but I really can't do that. There's no revenue. There's no bandwidth. There's no time to do that. And so I got rid of that franchise and began to really build the brand that we have now, which is based on the idea that you've been talking about of really delivering world-class value. What allows us to do that uh, is to be able to have the staff, to be able to do marketing that most agents aren't able to do based on bringing in more revenue per transaction. Now, um, what that means, I'm getting a little pop-up here, so uh, there we go, cool. Uh, what that means for the client is that we're able to deliver more value to them. Um, you know, so many people are so fee-sensitive uh, but we've been able to really develop based on a track record of delivering on our promises of getting clients more for their home, selling homes in, in, in shorter periods of time, and then allowing them to really, really enjoy the process. Uh, after doing that and tracking that, we've been able to communicate the clients in a way that when we express our fee to them, it totally makes sense. The, they understand how that will be invested for their benefit. They understand how that will allow staff and systems to get them to the ultimate destination that they want to get to, which is a bigger check in their pocket or bigger wire transfer, you know, at time of closing. So the kinds of referrals we get and the level of repeat clients that we get have really kind of surprised me. To be really honest, having past clients who paid us two or three thousand dollars to sell their home come back four or five years later and sit down in front of us and agree within minutes to a seven and a half percent commission sometimes plus usually plus transaction fees and they're thankful for it they go through the transaction they get a bigger check in a quicker period of time and at the end they say man I wish you were doing this years ago it, it just speaks volumes to the fact that we are right where we want to be we're right where we should be so it's been a lot of fun um, I, I'll get into some of the details of how we do that for sure um, but I'm at basically from here forward. I'm open to questions if people have them. So hey, I, yeah, I, I do have a question I want to ask you, Todd. And this is the one I okay, proposed yeah. to the group when we set this up. And I think this would be a good outline of from the second you get, or even maybe even where it starts, where you generate the seller lead, all the way until you do the presentation when you <clears> show them here's what I'm going to do for you. 
maybe if you can walk us through maybe the main stages of how you handle the whole experience up to the presentation to yeah. position yourself to get seven and a half because I mean from a simplest standpoint you know someone calls up you see that's great I want to sell your house and you just show up and you give your presentation and yeah. usually if you do a little bit more before that you can help position yourself better so maybe could you walk through the lifeline of a lead when a lead comes in what's the lifeline up to the presentation <clears throat> Yeah, I'll do that for sure. And obviously, you know, Jeff and I have had many conversations about the value of having multiple lead sources, of course. But I'll give you kind of a the, this a typical one for us. Um, understanding that the difference in say an inbound radio lead and an outbound expired prospecting call can be dramatically different. <clears throat> but uh, you said it pretty well, Frank. The, the standard MO is, you know, I've got a lead. Uh, if I'm any good, I, I hustle that down, I get an appointment, I run out to the house, and I try to tell them in, in part what they want to hear and just enough of what they need to hear to get the deal, and that's kind of the standard MO, and it causes a lot of headaches and, and, and a lot of turnover in the business. So what we do differently, basically start to finish, is you use the word already as positioning. Um, I, I talk to a lot of agents that are already delivering way, way, way more than more value than is you know kind of typical in their marketplace or whatever and so they're already delivering great value but they're not communicating it they're not positioned in a way that a client would necessarily recognize that so some of the things we do early on um, first of all we have a full-time inside sales associate which is one of those unique things that some teams have some teams don't but the way we communicate that to a prospect clearly sets us apart as, the, as a type of organization that has staff beyond the individual agent that's trying to juggle all aspects of the business on their own. So the other thing that we do very uniquely is when we go for the to close for an appointment, the appointment is going to take place in our office. So sellers come to us, um, and that's not the most unique idea on the planet. But I'd say probably eight or nine out of ten times the agent's going to run out to the house. Our positioning is based on the idea that we want to operate at a level of professionalism and a level of value where you might envision, you know. A well-paid attorney, or a well-paid CPA or accountant, or like a family doctor. Um, those people don't typically come to your house. Those people don't typically jump when you say jump. Those are the kind of people that you typically don't ask price. You do exactly what they recommend based on their expertise to achieve the results that they recommend. So, when we schedule an appointment for a seller, for instance, to come to come into the office. Uh, there's some specific scripting and dialogue around that that's going to communicate the value of that. Um, and some of the things that you would think of as a p possible objection are actually good things for us to hear. For instance, if somebody were to say, you know, how are you going to sell my house if you haven't seen it yet? That's a great tee up for us to say, hey, especially with an expired, for example, to say, you know, it seems like you've tried to sell your home before and you've tried a more traditional approach and you weren't really happy with the results. You'll start to see pretty quickly how differently we operate and the results that we provide are different as well. So one of the first things we do is we invite you into the office to, you know, and we give you 30 to 45 minutes of our time to decide if we're the right professional for you and if you're the right kind of client for us. And just that phrase literally telling someone to see if you're the right client for us is a real differentiator to show that you're, we're not going to work with just anybody. We're looking for a client that's looking for great value and it's looking for really for someone that's going to handle this for them instead of them being involved every step of the way and griping and complaining and asking a lot of questions. So one of those first steps is having them come into the office. The positioning of that is laid out kind of start to finish. They're going to be greeted at the front door by our client care coordinator. They're going to be brought into the conference room. Um, they're going to be offered a drink. Those kinds of things that you would expect at a very nice high-end professional establishment. Yeah, what's up, Jeff? Hey, yeah, I have a question. If, if you don't mind me just jumping in here, um, Go ahead. you keep saying that you bring them into the office, which is great. I used to bring a lot of uh, listing appointments in the office. Mm -hmm. My question is, and I, I, I'm sure agents are wondering, like. You're inviting them into the office. Do you go preview the home before? Do you look at the home, or you just have a good idea because it's a track home? I mean, what, what's how does that how does that how do you set that up? Yeah, so we do a lot of research before they come in, but the short answer is we have not been out to their house yet. Okay. So nine times out of ten, we've done online research. We've 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 gone through our standard interview process of qualifying a little bit, got some information from them, and we've done everything we need to do. And we've done we've set kind of a, a semi hard you know soft price on that. 
lot of times we were able to get pretty darn accurate with it. But part of the positioning of that is you're going to come in and you're going to make a decision as to whether we're the right professional for you, and we're going to make a decision as to whether you're the right client for us. Perfect. If we both decide that it makes sense to work together, we're going to send our whole marketing team out to the house, and that's specific as well. It's not just me. The whole marketing team, <clears throat> that's going to include stagers and photographers, possibly one of our marketing team members, and certainly one of our agents, if not me myself. Um, <laughs> So that's part of that positioning as well. So Ty, can thing, I, would it be all right? I want to step back here a little bit to kind of clarify yeah. things for everyone, sure. just to get a little more specific. <clears throat> so you talked about you handle what I got here so far is you have different leads from different sources mm -hmm. that have everybody treated a little bit differently. So the lead comes right. in, you have a conversation with the lead, okay, mm -hmm. to bring them into the <clears throat> office, okay. Mm -hmm. Then there's a very specific way they're treated in the office. Right, and and, um, and I think you're also looking for before they come into the office, we do send out a little email package. It's got a video that shows how we're different from standard market agents in the market. It's got some statistics and a very 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 cut down teaser version of the presentation they're going to okay. see. Let, they let me out. ask you this: How do you handle if you're calling expired, or you're calling, mm -hmm. or a lead comes in, mm -hmm. and let's say before you can even get to any of this, the mm -hmm. question is, you know, I don't want to pay six percent. Yeah. Say so great. We'll now talk let's about just say, when we sit down like, Let's say you're talking to a lead that comes right at. I don't want to pay six percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I sure love that. Exactly how, role play with me. All right. Yeah. I want to be a horrible mm -hmm. seller right now. So. Yeah. Hey Frank, I totally understand. Sounds like you're very, 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 very focused on exactly the net dollar amount you're going to walk away with. And that's absolutely something we dis we can discuss when we sit down together. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I just don't think a real estate's worth paying six percent of my million dollar house. Yeah, totally understand. And again, that's something we'll talk about when we sit down. We're not a one-size-fits-all company. Everything is customized to your needs, your situation, and you and I are going to sit down together and discuss, first of all, whether it makes sense for us to work together. And if it does, you and I are going to customize the exact marketing plan that will be the perfect approach to getting your home sold. So can you, tell me, that fits you. can you tell me any difference what makes you better than this last guy that tried to sell my house, like over the phone? Like one or yeah, two I mean, things that makes you different? Yeah, sure. I can give you a little bit of information. And, and to be honest, I, I don't even, I'm not exactly sure who tried to sell your house last time. It's not personal. I'm not real concerned with that. I can just tell you typically it's going to come down to a few different things. Uh, one of the biggest things that it's going to come down to is, is the condition of your home, the price of your home, and the way that your home was marketed. I bet, I a, lot see, of this, I bet a lot of this, by the way, is just how confident you are in this conversation. Absolutely. Of totally. course, getting into the specifics. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right. All right, you, fine. All right. All right. So, so, okay. I'll meet with you, man. Whatever. Just. I'll meet with you. I need to get my house sold. Yeah. What? What? What are you gonna get? What are you gonna get out of here? I need you to take a look at the house. Yeah. Actually, the first thing that you're gonna want to do is find some time to come in in the office. We'll sit down together. I'll show you some of the tools and the resources we use if it makes sense for us to work together. And first, we'll have a real conversation about whether we're a good fit for each other. Once we do that, certainly we'll get to the house. As a matter of fact, our entire marketing team will come out to the house. But I've got Thursday at 4 o'clock or Saturday at 10 o'clock available. Which one of those would be you know, better for you to come in this, and sit down? This is very interesting to me. So basically what we're getting at here is basically you're being very vague. Well, right? it's not that I'm avoiding the you're issue. You're not avoiding it, but you don't want to bring it up yet because it's not positioned. I can't, I can't sell you anything on the phone. I can't right. do it. it it's going to happen mm -hmm. when we sit down together. And, it, so, and it's, coming, it's coming through that the, the, you're, you're like a stated professional and, and almost yeah. the vagueness is important. Okay, fine. Yeah, a doctor right, so, can so you come, so you come across you strong on the phone, and I, I feel who you are, and he's now yeah. say, you know, come on into the office. So I drive up. Can you walk me step by step from the second I drive into the, into the, like yeah. parking lot, what I'm going to experience <clears throat> as your seller? Yeah, if it's a good day, my uh, our client care coordinator is going to be looking out the window five to ten minutes before the appointment time. She, if she sees you come in. You know, if it's raining, she's going to run you out an umbrella. You got, you got, you got a full-time person here, just mm -hmm. that sits there and, and greets people when they come in for appointments for you. I mean, how many, how many listing appointments are you having in your office, let's say, in a given day? Uh, yeah. anywhere from you know, we we have some we have off days where we have none, but in a good day, we could have three or four in the office. Okay. Um, and, you know, so sometimes you have someone at a desk that like, greets me, and this is someone in your team, not like the the front of Kelly Williams or something. Right. Yeah. So we have we have a suite in a building that has four suites. So we've got bottom floor suite that's all ours. We built it out ourselves when we outgrew our last space. How important is it that someone else is greeting them and not you? <clears throat> Phenomenally important. I mean, hugely important because you know everyone's opinion of the standard the standard real estate agent is that you're a solo guy working out of the back seat of your car. 
Um, and maybe in somebody else's marketplace, that's not the standard. So I, I don't want to universalize that. But on average, the thought is no, not. You're that right. I, I, I completely agree. It would be kind of weird if the doctor showed up and right. I like, skipped all the administrative stuff. Like, hey, man, come on in. Let's get this right. stuff done. <laughs> You're like, hey, I think I saw your picture on your website, and you yeah, were wearing I'll, that I'll same suit. Is that the only hard suit hard you have? If you, if you start right away. No, I get it, man. Okay. So, so, yeah, they're, so they're going to be greeted out. They're going to be greeted at the door, or even outside the door. They're going to be welcomed in. They're going to be actually invited into the kitchen area where we have a drink cooler that's got like 16 kinds of drinks, if not solely for the purpose of just looking cool. Everyone <laughs> picks one of the same two or three every time. But there's, you know, there's Starbucks stuff and juices and sodas and teas and waters and all kinds of stuff. They're going to be offered one of those. Um, they're going to be right, escorted. So, I, so, so the, I get my drink and I sit down. There's probably this nice conference table, right? Yep. And I'm, and I'm twiddling my thumbs. I'm like, all right, where is everybody? What do I get? Yeah. What do you get? So depending on who they are and what information we have from them up front, they may be in a conference room with a flat screen on the wall that's got a map of the area where their home is, possibly with their home pinpointed on it on the wall already. This is something your client care person sets up before. Let right. me ask you this. Do you have a checklist that your client care person goes through before an appointment? Yep, absolutely. Before, during, yeah. after, yeah. for the Do you next one. <laughs> uh, I could get that to people. I don't I don't have it in front of me this, this very second, but I can get right. it to I people. I will make you sure. search through your computer and crash it and everything coming down. Yeah, I that's think, what I'm literally like. How <laughs> I will I freeze I, up the screen? I would love to see that, yeah. that before the appointment checklist, mm -hmm. you have something during the appointment and then after. That's that's. I would love to see that. We can post that for everyone afterwards. Yeah, and and, and I'll, we'll get to it later, but I did actually set up a link. Uh, where people can go and all they have to do is put in their email address and I'll send them a much, much longer audio that I did discussing our program and our system. Uh, okay. We'll discuss as much as we can today, but obviously we can't get to That's as fine. much as we all want. That's fine. All right, so we're back We're yeah. back in and I'm sitting at your conference table and I still mm -hmm. haven't met you. Right. What's now? So you've been given a few things to look at that are relevant to your situation, whether they're properties to look at or information about your own home, whatever like that. By, so the, client care, by the client care coordinator. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yeah. So when I come in, you're, you have already been given some of what you came for. So we're not, we don't want to delay that any, any so more. I've gotten than, like comparable homes that have sold in my area. I got no, nice absolutely right not. <laughs> you know, I got absolutely like all not. the all the written value propositions that you <laughs> offer. But no. no contract. I don't see the contract, you know, do I? No, you've got. You don't even have comps. You don't have value-related stuff. You've got uh, marketing-related stuff that's going to oh, get just, you. Just, just the okay. Got it. So, yeah. so I, so I get it all. Mm -hmm. Now what? And so then I'm going to walk in. I'm going to greet you. I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, based on the positioning, what was mailed out, what was said about me, nine times out of ten, they're pretty excited to meet with me. They may have a copy of my book. Uh, they've start, they have already seen a video that's about me, about our team, about our position. Hang on, go back to that video. Is that video playing in the conference room while I'm waiting for you? We've tested that. We do not do that anymore. Okay. We've they sent that out to them before they... Yeah, no, we yeah. usually have something very specific to them on the screen. Okay, but before the appointment, <clears throat> you're sending them like a little pre-listing video. Correct, yeah. How long it's is all that about, It's all about how we're different. It's about three minutes. Okay, I want to see that too. Our, okay, yeah, we can, we can do that for sure. Um, yeah. That's on the front page of our website at DallasHomeRealty.com if people want to check that out. Where is that? Say uh, that store one more time. Where can people see that? DallasHomeRealty.com. So Dallas Home Realty, I can see the video that goes out before, mm -hmm. right after I agree to an appointment. It's like you an email goes out say, hey, watch this. <clears throat> yeah, and it was a video that? that was created real spontaneously, so it's not real prepped. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Well, that's just about how we're different, how we operate as a team. Yeah. Okay, so then so they're going to now, now you call, you know, you walk in in all your grandeur with lights behind you, and and and. and, and hey! Okay. <laughs> yeah. What's those keywords when you come in when you say something? Tell me how that goes down. I, I want to let's like can we role play that conversation? Because this yeah, is so where you're starting. You know, you're positioned well, but now you're going to have to lead into like. Okay, here's the price we're going to list your home at, which is a hard conversation. And here's I'm going to charge you more than you thought conversation. Uh, but you've yeah, been kind of so mentally kind of prepared, but you've been mentally preparing them for right. this guy might be charging a little more than what I'm used to yeah. here. So I so get that. To, so address that point, just because that's probably the one everybody's asking. Uh, we're never, ever, ever going to talk about that. My goal at the beginning of the appointment is that at the end of the appointment, they're going to say <laughs> something along the lines of, wow, so what does that cost? which is a clear recognition that they see more value 
than they expected. So if they ask me that question, you I'll say keep going and going and going and going and going until they <clears throat> price. <clears throat> yeah, basically, yeah. It, it, it's our presentations are not as short as some. Some people like to go in five minutes and they're out. I like to murder <clears throat> any objection they could possibly have so that we have a really really great time for the next. Sometimes three, you don't four, bring up price days. until they bring it up. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and occasionally they won't. So I'll say, I'm sure you're at. I'm sure you're thinking, and Hello? then they, they basically initiate. So, um, can you hear us, Jeff? Oh yeah, yeah. All right, the the screen freeze for a minute, but it's all okay. good now. Yeah. So when we st when we when we walk in, Frank, uh, they typically the appointment was set by somebody else, right? And that person has done some qualifying. So I already have that information. So when I so walk in to build that step back, so you have an intake form. So when the yeah. lead comes in. Uh -huh. Someone's answering the phone. Yeah. And or, there's an or, intake form of questions you're asking that's <clears throat> that's there. <clears throat> that that is teed up based on the presentation I'm gonna give later. So uh, I know some things about them, I know about their motivation, I know a little bit about their family, their situation, their home, all those things. So when I walk in to build rapport, <clears throat> as with any rapport building scenario, I want to find some commonalities, I want to set them at ease, I want to build trust. Uh, so we do that in a lot of different ways. And I don't I'm happy to do it, but we may not want to get that far into the details so we can cover bigger chunks of it. But whatever you guys think, I'm happy to respond to. But So I do some of that to build rapport. I get, <clears throat> we call it here, it's kind of the joke. Until we're friends, hey, hey, we're hey, not I'm moving on. Hey, Jeff, let's yeah. mute you because every time you cough, the camera like jumps to you coughing. Oh, I'm sorry. For the viewers, it might be like, oh, there's Jeff coughing all the time. <laughs> it's keeping it exciting. We're keeping it moving. Like, we're keeping or it like cover the mic. All right. Or I gotta, or I gotta, or I gotta figure out how to make the camera not jump on sound. Which I don't know how to all do. Right, all right. All right. But anyways, right. sorry about that. Todd, keep going. It's gonna be a great video. Um, <laughs> okay. So, um, so we build rapport. We don't move on to the presentation until we've got rapport built. Until they they acknowledge in one way or another. They chuckle. They laugh. They point. They high five. They shake hands. They say this is gonna be fun. Okay, we're looking forward to it. Okay, so we're excited to hear more. Something like that. And at that point, we go into our presentation, which, again, I'm happy to share about, but it's a very specific laid out presentation to, to build trust, to establish expertise, to eliminate. What we want to do fairly early on is have them lean back and say, so you, we can visibly see not submission, but that they're saying, okay, I'm just going to trust this guy. Uh, all the questions I had that were gotcha questions, all the things that I thought I knew more than the agent would know, I'm, I'm acknowledging now this guy knows his stuff. I'm going to put all that aside, I'm going to sit back and listen and learn, and I'm interested. So once we establish that, then we get into the details of what's happening in the marketplace. Do they understand that most agents have a one-size-fits-all, I have one marketing plan, one fee structure, one approach, and I'm going to put it on you, and we're going to customize, we're going to build, we're going to try to establish some very key things. We want to position the home for sale. We want to get fantastic marketing. We want to build demand and scarcity in the marketplace, and then number three, we're going to execute on all those things by having a fantastic team of specialists in areas where they do the one or two or three things that they're really, really great at, and they don't do anything else because that's not where they're gifted. How, how important is it to get someone to buy into the team concept? Very important because we legitimately can you go, can you do. Can a little deeper because you brought that up a lot. If I have a team of specialists... Yeah. So, yeah, so they, they probably dealt with someone that's just like an independent agent now they come to the other team, or what, what is that? Yeah, so here, here's one of the ways that I explain that. I'll say, hey, Frank, just so you know, I believe that God gives each of us unique gifts and abilities, and so I've built my team based on the fact that I'm really good at a couple of things, and I'm really bad at a lot of other things. <clears throat> you want me negotiating and marketing for you. You do not want me being the guy in charge of your file. Sarah does that on our team, and she is so good at it that she makes me get out of her office a lot of the time so she can get back to it. I've got buyer's agents on our team that are so gifted at showing property and, and evaluating property and, and negotiating for those properties that I would put my friends and family with them to buy a home because they're better than I am. Now, I've trained them and equipped them, but they're naturally gifted in that area, and that's why they're on our team in that area. We've got a marketing and operations director on our team He's got almost the exact opposite personality and skill set that I do, 
and that's a beautiful thing because he would not want to sit here and have this conversation with you. But when I go back and initiate all this marketing that we're talking about, he's the one that's going to make sure every day that gets executed on, that we're tracking and improving, and we are delivering the very best value to you every single day that we possibly can. While I'm out running the streets talking to buyers and sellers and doing marketing, he's in the office making sure that all these things are operating on on all cylinders. So we operate as a team where each person is going to deliver to you the absolute heart of their skill set, their passion, their goals, and where they're really, really gifted and what they want to do every day. So you may get a call from someone on my team that's not me, and that'll be because what they're going to discuss with you is what they're amazingly gifted at doing, and they're better at that than me. Does that make sense, Frank? Yeah, that's a sense. Okay, cool. And that's one of the ways that we're going to be able to deliver phenomenal value to you is you're not going to get one guy trying to juggle eight or nine or ten jobs. You're going to get those eight or nine or ten people each doing one job really, really well. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Cool. Hey, hey Todd, Todd, I got a real quick question. Yeah. Now the transaction coordinator, is that person licensed or unlicensed? Typically on our team, they're licensed. Right now we're in the process of, of getting this a new person. We had someone that was on my team for years retire so I've got a new person. Ironically, she was with me four or five years ago, and she's come back. So we're getting her license again. She's been in the title business for 20-plus years, so she's amazingly gifted. Awesome. Yeah. But we're going to get her licensed as an agent so she can do certain things that she can't do now. Yeah, I think that's important. So that way yeah. they can do a lot of things uh, yeah. through the contracts and everything. All right. Yeah. Even our marketing and operations guy is licensed, and he has no desire to ever work with a client. But in a pinch, he'll run out and show property. He'll throw an amendment together for an agent or something like that. So I agree. We want everybody licensed. <clears throat> awesome. Thanks. Yeah, and that cool. points to one other thing that I'll just mention real quick. We want to do. We, we want to be so far above board with ethics and, and legalities. Anything we do, we have a we have a real estate attorney that works for the board and helps create the licensing and contracts in our state. Review all that, um, and that that's also. I'm not recommending that anybody charge what I charge or or do exactly what I do. But if you can benefit from what I'm doing, I hope you do, and I hope it benefits you and your family and your business. So, how do you present price? Let's get down to how you. Okay, so that's typically at the end of the deal. We've already established that we are the experts when it comes to market data, pricing, marketing. Uh, negotiation. So at this point, again, they've sat back, they've acknowledged that we're the expert, they've laid all those little what if questions down to the side. It's funny, Frank, you'll get a kick. Usually, husband or wife or whatever will look at the other one and kind of give them that look like, okay, don't, don't ask the question that you don't ask the thing you were going to ask. Let's just leave that. We'll look stupid if we do that. Leave that alone. So it's really, really funny when you can visibly see them just acknowledge, like, okay, he knows this stuff. Let's not do the gotcha thing. Let's just go with this guy. And so we know where we are. And of course, we're, we've built in some languaging and some messaging and some persuasion to the transaction, I mean, to the presentation. So they've said yes to me 30 or 40 times by the time I get to the point. Does that make sense, Frank? Do you see how that would be valuable for you? Is that something that you guys would want in the process? Okay, does that, that seem like something you guys would like? Okay. Yeah, let's always sign the that? contract and get this thing started. Yeah, so that's usually where we are. And I'll say, great. Okay, so first, of course, we want to talk about price. And then, of course, we'll talk about how we, we get compensated. So we'll talk through price and everything. And then ultimately, I'll say, and here's where I'll step out of the, the role play here. And I'll say, this is where you want to think like a doctor. You come in. The doctor asks you a lot of questions. You may have a question or two. And then they prescribe a treatment to you based on their expertise, right? They don't give you a menu and you tell them what you want and then they try to steer you towards one treatment. They're the expert. They've assessed, assessed your situation and then they're going to tell you, here's, here's what I prescribe. And that's what we do. I don't ask. I don't offer. I recommend. And so we'll get to the end and I'll say, hey, Frank, based on everything we've talked about and the game plan that we've put together to achieve maximum value for your home, I'm going to recommend our maximum our maximum payoff program, <clears throat> that's a 7.5% commission. And of course, out of that, we're going to compensate the buyer agent as well. That's going to allow us to do the staging, the photography, the online advertising, the incentives to the other agents, all the things we talked about in the positioning stage, the marketing and negotiation stage. And then really, that's going to allow us to put you in our raving fan club and offer value to you forever and ever and ever as long as we know each other. So if you guys are ready, we'll get started right here. Does it make sense for us to work together? Yes. Great. So here we go, and then we'll go in here. Let's get into the boring stuff. The state requires that we use you, some, some Where do you long talk about? I guess step back. Where do you talk about what price to list the house at? Did I miss that? Yeah, right. It would be right before that. We would have gone through. Hey, 
uh, I've got a whole script, and, and not all of my scripts are mine, of course. I've borrowed and tweaked and improved. Mm -hmm. But we're not real big fans of comparables at all. Um, so we'll talk about how comparables are a small piece of the valuation process, but at no point does it make any sense to be completely at the mercy of the last two or three people that sold the house, not knowing their situation, their motivation, their financial stat status or anything. So we incorporate that. We incorporate everything from development in the area, interest rates, uh, the political climate. Uh, again, we're, we're expressing and displaying our expertise while educating them on how important it is to understand these things. We're usually telling stories throughout the entire process about how this fact, this approach has proven to be successful in these other scenarios. So we basically said, hey, here's what the market says your house is worth. If I were to come in just like a brand new agent and I were to pick the last two or three houses, find an average price per square foot, throw that at your house, here's what the market would say your house would sell for. But with our marketing and our approach, as long as this is what you want, I believe we would be able to sell for X plus this. Is that a number you guys think you'd be happy with? Yeah, we'd be excited about that. Well, you know, I don't know. I was thinking this. So we're going to talk through price. Usually they're super excited. And I'm going to say, great. So here's how I recommend we get to that number. Bam, 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 bam. Does it make sense for us to work together? Great. Okay, here's a couple of boring documents the state has us do. Here you go. Here's a few things that our team does. This is where we're committing to do this. This is where you're giving us permission to do that. Great. Hey, we're all finished there. Here's how the timeline of this process is going to look. You're going to get calls from these people. We're usually going to be up and running in this amount of time. So I'm giving them a snapshot of the experience they're about to have. Um, again, it's not all about the presentation, but obviously that's that's the bread and butter of how we do this. So any other questions you guys had before hey, I just keep Yeah, rambling? hey, Todd, so, you know, I, you prep them pretty well, but, you know, at the end, I'm sure you get some people say, hey, you know, we interviewed, let's say Jeff. We'll use me as an example. Mm -hmm. Hey, we interviewed Jeff earlier in the week, and he said he'd do all these things for 6%. What, you know, can't you do yeah. what all everything you're doing for 6% like Jeff? I'll say the short answer is no. Uh, but did Jeff talk to you about his incentive program for the buyer's agents? Did he offer a, a, a five-day, four-night cruise for two to the agent that, bu that brings a buyer to the house? No, he didn't offer that, but it sounds like I'm paying for that on the additional uh, commission. So I'm basically paying for that. So, right? Yeah, there's a couple of ways to look at it. Of course, the good news is you're not going to pay for anything until I've already delivered the results to you. Of course. Yeah. Uh, and again, when, when you and Jeff discussed price, uh, you know, did he feel like he was going to be able to get you to an, to about a six or seven percent average above market average sales price? Somewhere right in there. Yeah, he went over the comps. And he said he's you know gets like ninety five percent of list price. Yeah, and and as we discussed before, right now <laughs> we're averaging about. Yeah, list price can be a little bit tricky. Of course, we <clears throat> want to look at value as opposed <clears throat> to list price. People can ask whatever they want for their home. And I don't have anything personally against Jeff. I may or may not know him. You know, if I did, I would yeah. explain that I did. And I would just say, in short, I've done this lots of different ways. In the past, I've sold houses. I literally owned a flat fee franchise. We used to sell houses for $3,000. So I have a really unique perspective here. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you uh, that without investing the necessary dollars in the process that we just discussed, uh, I'd have a hard time believing that somebody could get you to the same end result that we can. And I've been doing this for about 14 years. I've tried it a couple of different ways. And so to be honest, again, the answer is, with you is no, I would not be able to do that. Uh, and, and include everything that we've discussed to get you to the results that we've discussed. Right. If you know somebody that, that you feel confident could get you to that result, again, I wouldn't be confident in that, and I'm not going to encourage you to do something that I'm not confident in. But if you were, you know, that's certainly an option for you, uh, but not one that I would recommend. Right. So, so you're telling me that absolutely not. You would not do it for 6%, and there's just no way you could do that and, and help us. Yeah, we really I just, like I, it. I, yeah, I couldn't do all the things that we just discussed. I mean, and, and I don't, I don't understand how anybody else could. To be honest with you, there's clearly some expenses tied up in those things. To be able to have the staff that we have, it's going to end up saving you thousands and thousands and putting more money in your pocket at the end based on sales price and process. Um, no, I mean the answer is just we're, we're not able to do that. And the other thing is, oftentimes people that ask this question, which by the way, the question is totally fair, and I respect your question, Jeff. Uh -huh. but a lot of times people say, well, what if you just didn't do this or that? And yeah. I would say. The way that we operate our business is I, I'm just not willing to do something at a lower point than I know we're capable of doing for you. And so we're not built to serve everybody. We're not built to work with every seller in the marketplace. I do think you're a great fit for us, by the way, and I'm extremely confident we can sell your home. And I really believe that nobody in the marketplace can put as much money in your pocket at the end of the day as we can. 
and deliver the process that we can. Uh, but we're not a fit for everybody, so there's definitely a choice to be made. Um, I think it makes sense for us to work together, don't you? I'm, I'm, I'm leaning that way, but do you really think that you, with a 7.5%, that you can net me more money than this other guy that's going to charge me, let's say, 5 or 6%? What if, what if there was an appraisal? <clears throat> what do you mean? If there's a previous appraisal for the value of the home? Yeah, what if maybe you know the, the other the other realtor actually got it appraised and said, here's what it says it's worth. How do you think it's worth more than what the appraisal says? I'd say, Frank, that's a really great point. And unfortunately, a lot of agents in the marketplace see an appraisal or comps as a ceiling. Um, I'd love to tell you a quick story. J just last week, we listed a property over on 15th Place in East Plano. And um, uh, when I ran the comps for her, uh, it came out to about 166000 Jeff's laughing at the price point for my marketplace. <laughs> came, came out to about 166000 I showed her our marketing plan. She saw the value and the difference in what we were going to do for her, and we priced the home at $200,000. Uh, to make a really long story short, I told her up front, there's a decent chance. Actually, we priced the home at 180000 I told her there's a decent chance uh, that the home may not appraise for that, <clears throat> but I want to show you how marketing not only is is there to impact the opinion of the buyer's opinion of value, it's there to impact the home inspector and the appraiser and anybody else throughout the process. So the good news is if for some reason it doesn't appraise, we'll know that we've hit maximum value in the marketplace and we'll discuss making sure that your net is protected at that time. But what I want to do is show you how our process can have an impact on that. And it worked out exactly like I told her. We, we got nine offers all above asking. And the highest offer was 194000 on a home where the comps were 166 and we asked 180 The appraisal, the first appraiser said he would not even go out to the house because there's no way he could value it. We told them, based on the marketplace and what we're doing as far as marketing and the value we see in the home, you need to get a new lender. She said, we totally agree. We love the house. They had a second appraiser go out. The appraiser came out and appraised it at $188,000. $8,000 above our asking, but still $6,000 below our contract price. I told her, she was ecstatic. She said, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. I can't believe you did it. I'll take it. You're, you're amazing. All the comps I got from other agents were way lower. This is the greatest thing that ever happened. I said, will you give me one day to try to get you more money? And she said, of course. <clears throat> so I went back to the client and I said, listen, we're at a little bit of an impasse because you and I both know the house is worth 194 We both already agreed to that price. But here's what I, I spoke with my client. She would be willing to make some adjustment as long as your client's willing to make up some of the difference. We'd be willing to go to 191400 but I need to know today because I have eight other people that made offers for this house, and I've got to go back to them if this isn't going to work out. She called me 25 minutes later and said, we've got a deal. I'm sending over the signed contract. She'll make up the difference in cash. So, Jeff, if you're worried about the appraisal value, can you see how effective marketing can even impact the appraiser? Yeah, yeah, I can clearly see that. All right, so here, Great. I got another question, Todd. That, good, okay. good answers. I love it. And, I, I, and it really shows that you're bringing value. Um, now, what percent of the time do you end up taking the listings and, and getting those? You know, the, 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 you're, you know, because you're, you're only doing it for 7.5%. So I assume the rest of the market's doing it for less. Um, yeah, I know and, there's and we, no set commission, and you know we're not going to go into price fixing and all that crazy stuff. <laughs> we're not all, doing all, that. But, but yeah, I know all commissions are negotiable, and not they, all, set of law. course we all know that <laughs> we're licensed brokers. But yeah. I know, and I know, and you know that the yeah. average agent or the 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 average in your market is not seven and a half percent. Right. So how many times, or what is the percentage that you actually take the listings when they go through this whole process that you've just taken us through? Yeah, if they come into the office, we're going to close at above 90%. Um, right. And typically, typically, the only reason we're not going to work together is if, if I've decided that we're not going to work together. Now, that doesn't mean that once in a blue moon, we're just not a good personality fit or their cousin in the industry just is, was right. unbeatable on the deal. Um, and, and I'll also say that once in a blue moon, um, there's, a, there's a marketing reason or a financial reason that we'll take one at a different fee. Uh, it could be that um, it's it's a vacant home that needs some upkeep and maintenance, and they've got a limited budget, and they've got to spend some. You know, there could be where they just owe too much money, but it's very, very, very rare. I mean, more than nine out of ten, it's virtually a hundred percent. Basically, if we take a listing that's the client type that we're targeting, 
that's that's the fee structure. There's a transaction and compliance fee in addition to that, also paid at closing, um, and uh, that's that's just how we do business. Awesome. And so so my next question is, sorry, Frank, let me get one more in here. Um, what is the percentage of the clients you actually have coming into your office versus going to their house, or do you never go to their house? No, it's about 80% come in. We do go out sometime. Typically, the older clients that are, you know, for whatever reason, are less mobile. Um, and then we serve a big market. We're in Dallas, Fort Worth, yeah. and uh, so sometimes our office just isn't really in the in the heart of the market where they're selling. A lot of times they'll they'll drive an hour plus to come see us because they're compelled by our marketing. But sometimes we'll drive out there. Obviously, there's kind of a sliding scale of uh, price point, geography, quality, eagerness of the of the client to whether we're willing to go out or not. But yeah, we go out sometimes. Yeah. For All sure. Right, All right, Frank. Yeah, I just realized there's a whole question box over here. Yeah, okay, yeah, we got like 15 minutes. We've been going for like 45. Yeah. I could keep going and asking them questions. Yeah, it's great what stuff. What percent do you offer the other agents for the buyer agent fee? <clears throat> Say that one more time. What percent do you offer the other agents for the buyer agent fee on the side of your contracts? Oh, We offer 3%, which again, there's no standard or whatever, but that's what everyone expects in our market. So we offer what's totally normal. If not, it's maybe a little higher than normal. And then we also offer incentives to those agents, which we've already kind of talked a little bit about Cool. on every, on every listing. All right, let me run through a couple more of these. <clears throat> Is there a place where someone can get the exact presentation, the documents that are used for what you're doing here? Yeah, we'll make sure I give them some ways to communicate with me afterwards. I'm not here to like pitch a bunch of stuff, but I'll it, real quick. If they go to toddsaudios.com, t-o-d-d-s-a-u-d-i-o-s.com, and just put in an email, I'll send them a really long audio, and then they'll they'll have my info, and we can talk back and forth. And I'm happy to share a lot cool. of what at I've least you, at least you have them available for somebody. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's just kind of go through a couple more. Do you pay for staging upfront or rebate the sellers at close? I pay for it, and I pay for it up front almost every time. Okay. Let's see. I have a great rate with the stagers because we use them a lot, obviously. I bet. Here's a good one. What if there are five to 15 other realtors in your exact area who are just as good as you? There are <laughs> Just as good as the positioning and just as good with the marketing. What do you do? There aren't, and there, there won't be because we're improving every day. I mean, in theory, if that were the case... We would find we would have to get better. We'd have to add more value. We'd have to look for tools, resources, staff that we could incorporate into our system to be better. Yeah. Because we're we're telling our client we're their best option, and there's character and integrity behind that. And if you can't deliver on that, do not charge a fee that you can't deliver value in excess of. Yeah. And I believe that hardcore. I mean, um, listen, you know, everyone can do what they want to do and base their core values on whatever they want to base it on. But I follow Jesus, and, and and my deal is to treat people treat people well. And so, you know, you can judge that however you want. But I'm at no point going to tell someone I'm your best option, and no one's going to market more aggressively than me, and then go get lazy on them and not communicate. Doesn't mean we don't screw up and fail every once in a while, but we're every single day going to build and improve because, of course, people are chasing us and trying to duplicate and copy, but they'll never keep up. And I think we answered this question was like the appraisal question I asked was what happens if there was an appraisal and you're trying to say like I can get up more than that. We answered that earlier so someone can watch that one. I'm going to skip on that one. Here's an interesting one. What if someone doesn't have a team or they're yeah. virtual? They don't have an office like yours. So that's, I mean, that's I think really the core question here. If I'm listening to this as a and trying to pick up some tips, it's how do I implement this to myself? And it's, you know, a handful of people might have kind of the same setup as me, but a lot of other people might have a bigger team or a smaller team or might be solo. So the bigger, I th the theme and idea here is you've got to build the business that you want. You don't need to build my business. You need to build the business that you want. And so if you're an agent on somebody else's team, you can still implement some of the pieces of this puzzle. If you've got your own team or you're solo or you're a broker and not a team leader or whatever, I would simply say, you know, take some time to step back and think through what kind of business do I want to build? If you want to build to what I've got, great. There's some ways I can help you with that or other people can help you. But if you're a solo agent, you can be really, really great at delivering value. You can do better than just comps for price. You can do better than just MLS for marketing. You can do better than working out of the back seat of your car as far as being organized and delivering value. You could get a virtual assistant uh, to send out a pre-listing package. You could do a video with your iPhone or whatever phone you've got or borrow somebody else's phone 
send out a pre-listing video to deliver value. You can work on your scripts and your dialogues. You can offer incentives in ways that don't cost you money. You could find a vendor in your town that would be willing to give you something for free just to get his name out there and offer that as an incentive to an agent. So we could talk about ideas like that for, for days on end. But what I'm saying if is if you're a solo agent, you need to sit down and say, what are what are buyers or sellers in my market expecting? And now how can I spend a weekend putting together a program to deliver more than that? And then how can I spend every day for the rest of my career trying to improve that and add value on top of that? And when I screw up, can I replace it with something better? And when something works, how can I tweak it so we can convert better, deliver more value? When I see something that works to get more money in my client's pocket, I'm going to make a note and I'm going to study it and figure out how to do it again. When I see something that does poorly, I'm going to make sure that my client got real value and if I need to compensate them for it, I will and I'm going to correct it next time. Is that a fair answer, do you think? I don't yeah, think so, right. for sure. <laughs> so I'm just going through the rest of these. Okay. these are just... Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I would be interested to know, um, predominantly because I work with a lot of agents that have listing agents doing these, is <clears throat> a lot of what I've heard is very, um, is your skill set on being, handling these objections and concerns and mm -hmm. pushing those price questions down the road so you can focus on building the value and bringing them in and attracting them to you, right? Um, how much of this is dependent on your skill set versus maybe is it teachable to somebody else? How would you answer that yeah. question? Well, that's a, that's a great question. Um, the question is, can I leverage this out to somebody else or am I the only one that can do it? And hey, if I don't have the same skill set as you, can I implement this? The answer is, um, you know, obviously they're like I said, I believe people have God-given gifts and it, it allows us to do certain things and, that other people can't do. So and if you don't enjoy speaking to people and if you don't enjoy you know, the power of language and scripting and things like that, you may not be quite as effective. Um, but you can study, you can improve, uh, and you can work at it. But if that's not you, you can hire somebody that has those skill sets. And when you're earning a, a substantial profit point on each transaction, you're going to have the revenue, the cash flow, the profit to then invest in great staff with great skill set and great gifts. Um, so number one is yes you can teach somebody else. The biggest part of teaching somebody else is the initial point where they really believe that they can deliver world-class value. They believe that you have a system that can deliver that world-class value. Because once they believe it up here, they can execute it on it. It doesn't have to look and sound like me. You could look and sound and have a completely different personality than me and still deliver this. I had a I had a listing agent on my team for a year. She was very good, but she was very, very different than me. Um, in the beginning, to be really honest with you, I was a little worried that her personality might not lend itself, but she adjusted it to her style and her personality. She was believable and genuine and honest, and she would have gone to the death to defend that we were delivering world-class value. She believed in it, and that was the most important thing, and we were able to customize the delivery and the messaging to her personality, but the belief that she could and would and really wanted to deliver great value was the most important part of me being able to leverage that out to her. Does that make sense? That makes complete sense. Totally. Yeah. How, so many, hours a lot of How many hours a week do you work, Todd? Oh, that's a, who's listening. Um, <laughs> How many I, I work hard enough. I work hard and I love it. So I wouldn't say an a, there's no such thing as an average week, but um, I'm involved in youth ministry. I've got a four-year-old and a two-year-old. I've got a wife that I love a lot. I like to hunt and fish and travel. I've got season tickets to the Mavericks and Baylor football. So I do a lot of stuff. I have a lot of fun. Uh, I'm very flexible with my work schedule. But when I work, I you know I tend to put in I put put in a lot of work. But I'd say on average I probably work a lot less uh, than I used to when I uh, enjoyed what I did less, made less money, uh, and had a lot less freedom. If I, I get, I don't know if that's an answer to the question, but um, you love what you, you know, do. I do. I come in early. Uh, a lot of times I stay late, uh, but other I, times I, I leave. At, is the right word to use. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I leave at three o'clock some days to go coach T-ball. You know, so how big um, online reviews for you? Like when you're talking um, it, about it, like online, like online reviews of positioning, where people check those things online or yeah. Google, Google sleuth you. It's some, it's something that we want to get better at. To be really honest with you, but it is important to us. We've been working on it uh, in our marketplace. Uh, most agents have zero Google reviews. Um, the the well-positioned agents have two or three. I think we've got you know 20 or so right now. 
Uh, I'm a big believer in social proof. One of the cool things we did last year is we took a lot of our written testimonials and we had uh, we did a big Fiverr deal and had a bunch of them converted over to the hand-drawn whiteboard type videos. Um, they're not the best quality out there, but there's a, they're, they're multi-dimensional. They give you a different perspective of that. We've done some video testimonial stuff. Uh, we would definitely want to get better at things like Yelp uh, and stuff like that. Sure. And that's one of the things you and I have been talking about that you can probably help us with. If anyone uh, has anyway, any other questions, I, I learned how to use the questions app over here by answering <laughs> them. And I guess when you, when you click it, it says you're currently answering a question, and then it files if it's answering that, which is cool. So I just see them right here if you guys want to say anything. Yeah, and, I, and I've got a little bit of time, so I'm, I'm cool to hang out if we, if we go over a little bit. I don't, if we want a hard stop, that's fine too, but... Um, but I'm, I'm happy to share as long as as long as it makes sense for us. Yeah, man, I think the biggest thing what people could really use is just, you know, if you have any, where they can go or where they can learn more about, you know, seeing the checklist before the appointment, seeing the checklist yeah. of what you do at the appointment, seeing the yeah. checklist of what you do during and then after, and then as well as all these scripts that you're using and the marketing materials that you're using to kind of visually see these things. You know, yeah. even if you have it available, you want to say again where someone can go to at least get started on the journey to obtain that information? Yeah, um, I wouldn't. You know, I'm happy to share. I wasn't trying to have a big yeah, package or whatever. I understand that, man. But those are. I mean, no. One, I don't think anyone's really asking for those for free because you probably have spent your, yeah. your lifetime figuring those things out. <laughs> yeah, you know? and that's not even the point I was getting at. I'm just saying what I've thrown together for now is if you'll go to toddsaudios.com and put in your email. Uh, we threw that together real quick, and that'll send you uh, a bigger uh, audio interview on this stuff. That'll get us connected, and then if you want to email me something specific that you want, um, I'll try to I'll try to make a, an easy way to get that stuff to you. Yeah. So I, I just I, I, I don't have that set up, but I'll, but I'll be happy to share it. I gotta love Katie Zabraki, who's asking a bunch of questions here. She wants to know everything. God, God bless her here. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. This is, let's ask. I'll answer some questions for her really quick. Okay. Um, can you share what your total GCI is on average every single month of gross commission income? And then how much how much do you spend on everything? Just like financially, like with, a, with the level and scale of your business, can you give me some like GCI numbers and cost numbers with that roughly? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what her core question is. I mean, obviously the question is about profitability when you're offering all this stuff. There's some, you know, you've got some overhead and tied, and tied into that. Uh, a couple so what of you, questions. What's your, revenue and, what's your revenue and profitability targets, and what's your budget for marketing? I mean, just give me some numbers. Yeah, well, I can say this year our goal is to do a million dollars in GCI. Um, I'll preface that by saying we could sell more, uh, but my goal is not to be buried in transactions and just to be hustling and sweating all day. And neither with the kind of agents that we bring on our team are the same kind. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to have fun. I want to be invested in other areas of my life where I have passions. I want to be around my kids. I don't want to be on my cell phone on the weekend at their games and stuff. So to be honest, our, our office is pretty slow on the weekends. But I, I do want to answer the question. Our target for the year is a million in GCI. Um, and, 80, uh, 83000 a month in commissions. Yeah, that's the goal. You know, and some months we're behind and some months we're ahead and some months we're right there. But we have fun with it. We've got a cool incentive thing we're doing this year. When we hit our numbers from last year, we're going to all do a big bowling and wine and fun night. When we hit our, our short target... We're going to do bring in a private chef for everybody plus one and have a big time. And if we hit our annual goal, we're going to take everybody to a, to a, like a, a weekend getaway deal of this really, really cool resort thing. So we do some fun stuff like that. But I do want to answer her question. What was the other part? Oh, what's the cost of the marketing stuff? Um, you know, like a much, lot of it... How much do you spend on just acquiring all this business in the first place? I mean, that's, um, that's really the big question. It's like, oh, yeah, you can make all that money, but that's going to cost you a lot yeah. to get it. You know? I, I'm only smiling because we keep our costs pretty low. So our average marketing cost in a given month is somewhere around twelve or thirteen thousand um, dollars. So if you were look, fifteen percent of your GCI. Yeah, I want to be really honest with people about cost because I think a lot of people are not real genuine. Um, cost per lead, cost per conversion is a very, very difficult number to get your hands around because you have so many different kinds of leads, and it could be a pipeline deal from two years ago. So. I think sometimes when those numbers are thrown out, they can make you feel really bad about your business, but they're not always what they're presented to be. So yeah. um, I don't even track some of those numbers that pe other people think of as the right numbers to track. We want to be profitable. Uh, we want to invest deeply in transactions, but more so we want to invest in the relationships we have with our clients. So one thing we haven't talked about that's a big value add for people 
is our raving fan club, which is not a unique idea, but the way we do it long term, we really do add a lot of value. We send in the mail physical value added mail piece to our to our past clients and raving fans on average four times a year. Uh, we have an inner circle that's our top five percent of past clients as far as referrals and repeat business and we send them something every month. They don't know that that's the interval but it's a, it's every other month. Uh, it could be a fifty dollar gift card to a nice steakhouse, it could be a customized cooler bag. Uh, last year for the entire group of past clients and raving, past clients and raving fans we did uh, uh, branded koozies. We just did sunglasses for the summer to everybody. So we're just staying in touch and adding value. We've got pressure washers and ladders and pop-up tents and, and chairs and tables. And we just did a crawfish party two weeks ago for all of our past clients and raving fans. Uh, we give away pies in November. So we're invested in that relationship way beyond just the transaction. Um, so, you know, again, it's hard to, it's hard to track those numbers back and say X dollars spent per lead per transaction. But uh, we keep our costs down and we keep our profitability up. Um, but we invest in those relationships. We don't do a lot of dumb stuff. You know, I, I negotiate negotiations like one of my favorite things under the sun. So we got a good deal on office space. We get a good deal with our vendors, uh, and then we have some marketing agreements with other vendors that defer some of our costs and things like that too. Cool. Well, that's all the time we have for today. That was a full hour. It was quick. <laughs> all right, like Jeff. What do you got coming up? Um, well, we have on the next episode, we have Greg Harrelson from Myrtle Beach, and he we're going to be going over um, database, um, he, how he works his database to get more sales, and um, he uses infusion styles for tech marketing. Five million GCI. Yeah, he does a lot, and I think he did like yeah. three or four hundred transactions last year just from working his database with content marketing using infusion So we're going to have him on, I think, it's not next Thursday, it's the Thursday after. So that, that we're looking forward to that. And Frank, how can they um, watch this at a later date? And also, yep. where, where can they tune in? And, and what should they be doing so they can get more notifications to tune into this in the future? Absolutely. Well, number one is going to be uh, subscribing or joining, I don't know what the word is, on Google+. Plus. So mm -hmm. following the Real Geeks Google Plus page, Okay. Time there's an event, it'll be posted there as a post and you'll be able to see it. Sure. But also this recording, right when I click stop broadcast, is going to be saved in its entirety up on the Real Geeks YouTube channel. So if you go to the Real Geeks YouTube channel, you're going to see a playlist of all these there. You can click there, watch the full video recording. And to be updated, we don't have the event created yet, but it's every other Thursday at this time. Uh, sure. That should be with Greg Harrelson. And then uh, a link will go out through email, an RSVP that way, but probably the safest way because, you know, because email goes to not is to follow the Real Geeks Google Plus page where you'll see a post of the event coming up. All right, sounds good. I, I want to thank you both for helping put this on. And uh, Todd, thanks again. And thanks, we're Todd. definitely going to do future um, hangouts with Todd because he's got a lot of share to share in different aspects of the business. Yeah, Frank. thanks, guys. It was a ton of fun. See you. Right, thanks, Frank. <laughs>